This is live from the table, recorded at the world famous Comedy Cellar, coming at you on Sirius XM 99, Raw Dog, and on the <laughs> Laugh Button Podcast Network. Dan Natterman coming at you via Zoom from Las Vegas, Nevada at the Rio Hotel. I am performing all week at the Comedy Cellar in Las Vegas at the Rio Hotel. If you're in the Vegas area, come on down and see us. We have a great show this week. Uh, but let's get on with the podcast. We have Home Dorman coming also via Zoom from his house at an undisclosed location in Westchester County, New York State. And Periel is in studio. And a shout out to Nicole Lyons. She's been very busy, but she is our sound engineer and um, I usually don't include her in the introduction, but I think maybe it's time. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I don't know why Noam's not in studio, but he's in Westchester. Uh, I'm he's in Vegas. Not feeling well, I, I'm, I'm not, my son has the flu, and I've, I've been I've been taking care of him for the last few days, and now I, I've been taking some Tamiflu, uh, you know, preventatively, prophylactically, as uh, we say, and um, I feel like it's making me sick too. I don't know, but but he, my son, you know, I, I, if I just to come in just for the podcast and then go home. I'd rather stay home uh, and, with my son. And no, I didn't want... way, sorry, before we get into more substantive matters, and maybe this is substantive, uh, I have to uh, let you know just how loyal I am to the Comedy Cellar. I woke up on Monday to come here to Las Vegas, and now maybe this is my own fault. I booked Spirit Airlines because airfare to Las Vegas is outrageous these days, and I, I heard Spirit's not as bad as they used to be. Anyway, they canceled my flight. So I said, well, I have to get out to Vegas. I have promises to keep. I have miles to go before I sleep and promises to keep, to quote Robert Frost. And I got out here and it, at, at some expense, I'm not going to tell you how much. And I don't want to feel, I don't want you to feel guilty and feel the need to reimburse me. That's not what it's about. You've been very good to me. Whether it was $300, whether it was $400, whether it was $400 plus $35 tax, it doesn't matter. The point is I did what I had to do to get out here. And uh, I am, and hopefully Spirit Airlines will, uh, will, you know, we'll uh, make it right. I doubt it, but um, hopefully somebody will do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, here I am in Las Vegas. The shows have been dynamite so far. So I, I'll knock on wood because I don't want, uh, I, I hope it continues. But the crowds have been good. The comics have been good and it's all been good. Although Mark, Mark Cohen got you some weed and hookers. Uh, well, I, Mark Cohen's not a specialist in hookers. With regard to weed, I'm not a big weed smoker. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, but um, uh, what about yeah. hookers. But Mark's not a specialist in hookers, and I don't have the budget for hookers. Are they? Oh, are thanks they... to me. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't blow it on that airfare, you might. What do hookers go for? Well, I mean, come on, that what do hookers? That's like saying what do cars go for? I mean, <laughs> they, they can go for. What does Tesla cost? <laughs> uh, the, the high end, you know, probably a couple grand for the hour. An hour? an hour yeah i mean they they quote by the hour but it, it's the hour or that portion thereof you know an, an hour or until you're done whichever comes first i guess now when she when they charge a couple grand is that for um higher end services or just because she's hotter no i get you know i mean please don't uh think that i am like the expert in on these matters but uh, what you I, heard I don't, on the street, you know, I, I don't I'm not sure. I think because they're hot or because I think sometimes if they're pornographic actresses of some renown, they might uh, charge money because you're getting somebody that you might like, for example, um, Stormy Daniels. Yeah, Stormy, you know, Stormy might cost a premium because people know who she is. Um, Wait, are you uh, telling me that a prostitute is really a couple grand an hour if she is hot? Well, I think a very you know, I I, I will I will just I mean that I, is insane. I will just tell you this. This is all I can tell you with within terms of personal experience. I was at a strip club in Toronto. A very, I mean, really, really beautiful, like, you know, as hot as any movie star. Stripper told me that she would come uh, that she would you know um, come to my hotel room for a thousand dollars Canadian? Obviously, she didn't say Canadian, but we were in Toronto. Um, I declined the offer, but she was off the charts hot, and she was a thousand dollars. Now, so but for know, the night or for an hour? Because generally it's by the, generally it's by the hour. 
generally it's by the hour. Why did you for the night when you wanted to do it and get the hell out? Just like every other woman. All right. But an hour, that's like a (laughs) teasing. An hour should be sufficient time to do what needs doing to finish doing what you need to do. An hour is more than enough. Now, did you just turn it down because of the financial commitment? Budget constraints dictated. I mean, had I had an unlimited budget, I can't say I would have said no. She was very, very obvious and and Canadian. So she was pleasant. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine why you would have turned that down. It seems like. um, Well, again, a thousand dollars is a bit of once in a while, like a splurge like that seems prudent. No. Now, let me ask you a question, Perriel, as a married woman. Hmm. What what if your what if uh, uh, your husband were to splurge like that on a business trip? With a prostitute? Yeah. Um, how does that circle back to me though? Do I also get to um engage in you that? you you can answer both questions. I do not think I would um appreciate that. Would you would you call it divorce worthy uh misbehavior? No, I don't think so. Um, but that, that means he can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I like how no, through no oh, oh, filter. Oh, oh. I can't do that. I'll be sleeping on the couch for a week. <laughs> what, what, what sanctions might there be then, Periel, if divorce wasn't uh, called for? Well, I are, mean, are, I, are there other sanctions that might be uh, brought to bear? I think that it really depends. Like, is it something that like we talked about before or did he just go on a trip and then come back and tell me that he had sex with a prostitute? Well, what if he, he went, he, oh, go ahead, Dan, go ahead. Well, how about he, he if he asked you, he said, look, it's just sex and she's really beautiful. And uh, I don't need to hear that she's really beautiful part. We can start. There. No, Ariel, but I'm away from I'm, I'm away from home. But, but what if it wasn't even that bad? What if he didn't even tell you? You just found out you, like, you, you, you found out somehow. No, that's worse. No, because he didn't want you to hurt your feelings. No, 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 no. That's worse. Finding out because then you've also lied, which I think is worse. He didn't lie. He never, he didn't, you never asked. <laughs> but listen, do we <laughs> do we need to get Juanita in here? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, Juanita's, see, Juanita's answer would we, we know Juanita's answer. Everything is everything is worth divorce for Juanita. <laughs> <laughs> Prostitute would be like way way above the the, the the requirement. I feel like a prostitute's much preferable to like, you know, somebody who you just met. Now, what if it wasn't process? What if it wasn't intercourse even? It was just like a massage. Well, that's fine. A mis- like a happy ending massage? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's understandable, I think. Oh my God. That is a good woman, Dan. <laughs> yes, yes, fine woman indeed. Um, I mean, but it's easy to like th- sit here and, you know, philosophize about it intellectually. You know, I don't think that if I were more evolved, I don't even think I would have a problem with him having sex with other people. But, but you can bring home diseases from sex. Well, I mean, she's a prostitute. Well, I mean, I would say that prostitutes, you probably have less of a chance because if they're being careful and smart, then they're fine. I mean, it's a very wow. bourgeois kind of position, you know, like in huh. France, nobody has a problem with any of this. Really? Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure. I think it's a very <laughs> American sort of bourgeois position that, you know, being monogamous is the only, you know, the only way that you're supposed to be. I mean, well, are human well, beings it- meant to be monogamous, Noam? For the rest of their lives, like is that not, not men? No, not men. <laughs> now, what what does bourgeois, what does bourgeois mean actually? Just like, I'm not quite sure what that meant. Dan, she well, should, I mean, not, doesn't know. No, I do, much. but I feel like he'll be more articulate than I am. In this context, I don't know what she means either. I mean, bourgeois definitely means right the upper class, I think. But middle, um, isn't it like middle class sort of? Um, well, I think it can have that meaning in the certain context. I know what you meant. I, like I, sort of like conservative uh, values, a little bit staid, uptight. Well, I can look it up. And then I'd like to get to uh, another topic, if we could. Uh, a bourgeois, a person belonging to the middle class, a, a person whose attitudes and behavior are marked by conformity to the standards and conventions of the middle class. There you okay. go. I was so wondering. maybe that's that's what she meant. But th- but speaking of monogamy, that brings us to, the, to, the, to Will Smith and Jada and... Uh, we did discuss this last week, but no, but my friend uh, Dave Kim from Atlanta, Georgia, wanted to hear your thoughts and was quite disappointed that you weren't uh, 
there for that episode, so I think it's worth revisiting the slap heard around the world to get Noam's take. Noam, by the way, did an interview with The Hollywood Reporter wherein they asked him what effect the slap might have on the comedy business. I couldn't so, even spell bourgeois. That's how, that's how dumb I am. I, could, I, couldn't, even, I, I, could, I couldn't even spell it close enough for Google to help me on it. I finally got it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, but did you hear what I just said? Yeah, you want to know my position on oh, Will Because you weren't here last week, and uh, Dave Kim, among others, would probably like to know your thoughts on the matter. Well, I mean, I have nothing, I have nothing um, profound to say on it. Obviously, you can't go assaulting comedians, uh, whatever they say. I mean, we, these, these, these rules are quite established in the law, uh, even um, without comedians, let alone when you're at a an awards show where the traditional role I'm sorry I'm making money while we play whether whether you while the uh, uh, traditional role of the presenter is as far as I understand often to lightly roast the attendees so this is within the the parameters of what to be expected there's some there's some it's a, it's not an irrelevant I mean it is irrelevant now that he hit him but if he hadn't hit him and if he just complained about it then it would be relevant to know whether Chris Rock knew that she had alopecia or thought he, she, you know, that she just had, was making a bold fashion statement. As far as I've heard through kind of like two degrees of separation, he didn't know she had alopecia and he actually thought she looked pretty and was making like a, like teasing her, but in a nice way because he thought she looked good. Um, but that doesn't, once, once he crossed the line of hitting Chris Rock, that doesn't become a necessary even a relevant question anymore. Um, that's that's my whole thing. The, the, it's hilarious to me that it took like three or four days for everybody to realize that this was clearly wrong. And, you know, Hollywood, my, my quote was that the people in Hollywood look to their left, they look to their right, you know, they don't know what to think. And then they stood up and gave Will Smith a standing ovation, just like they gave to Roman Polanski, these fucking idiots who they spend their whole lives judging everybody for everything, just judging, judging, judging. And then right in front of them, Finally, they have their own to judge and they and they prove that they're totally incapable of they're just lemmings, sheep, can't think for themselves. Um, they're just they're, they're ridiculous, right? These Hollywood people, they're just ridiculous. So in no, in the Hollywood Reporter uh, uh, article, they asked you if you felt that uh, this would then give rise to, to, to more violent behavior in comedy clubs which I think is a ridiculous notion, but and but but anyway, what did you have and, to say? And I said, no, I didn't think so. And then the Hollywood Reporter quoted me correctly, and then like six other papers managed to excise some remarks in my Hollywood Reporter interview and turn it into me saying that I thought there would be violence. Did you see that? And also no, page, I, six, page six did exactly the same thing to me in their own interview with me, where they asked me the question, do you think this is going to lead to more violence? And I said, I don't think so, but... You know, I suppose there's a chance because people used to duel and stuff, but I don't think so. And they left out the part where I said, I don't think so. Oh, my God. And also left out the part where they asked me. They made it sound like I brought it up. And <laughs> I like the, the press. The press is ridiculous. Like you should just assume everything you read is not true because every experience I've ever had with the press, save a very few examples. Present company included being. Yeah, um they get it wrong and it, like they they have their narrative and they fit your statement into the into the story they already want to tell it's 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 insane what they do isn't that how we became friends though yes yes that's how we became Periel interviewed me that's right and she and she had integrity she tried to get it right I didn't try but to even, get it right. I really. But went, even uh, New York Magazine did this ridiculous thing about me moving the comedian table that wasn't true. Like they just and these are these are unimportant things. But you think that you'd think they're any different when it comes to like uh, a president or Hunter Biden's laptop or Donald Trump's list. I mean, like they, they they don't care what's true or not true. I really I, went to bat for you, didn't I? And then I got in trouble because I said that the New Yorker had like made something up and the editor in chief of uh, my magazine was like, you can't just go around calling other journalists liars like you have to go reach out to this guy and give him an opportunity to respond. Yeah, I, I, I think I said this last week, but uh, of the very rare instances that I have seen an audience member either threaten 
or or assault a comedian. And I think I've only seen it three times. And and I hate to say how long I've been doing comedy, but in a long time, it's always a husband or boyfriend defending his woman. It's, always. It's, always, it's always that. So if if so, if I would say to comedians, if you are worried, and I don't think the danger is particularly elevated, but if you're worried, don't make fun of it. <laughs> Don't make fun of chicks. Don't make fun of, especially where, where, the, where their boyfriend or husband is there. But that's how. Uh, that's and to how be it, fair, it's, it, tell me if I'm wrong or right. It's usually the woman won't shut up. <laughs> and she's heckling and bothering the comedian. Finally, the comedian will say something to the husband like, can't you put something in her mouth to shut her up? Or you know, something like that, like, like something, some vulgar thing, or he'll call her the C word or whatever. Usually it's the, the woman is heckling the um yeah the, i think that's true i think of the of the examples that i have in my mind i think it went down like that yeah the comedian then appeals to the husband the husband defends her some way he insults the girlfriend then the, then the husband gets macho or the boyfriend gets macho yeah i think that has been how it's how it's gone down but it is always a, a defending the honor of the woman sort of a thing oh, no, i believe so in defending the honor of a woman but um, it's ridiculous. Nobody needs their honor defended. This isn't like 1873. Like we're fine. We don't need you no, to like go. Anything, is there anything where uh, that a comedian could say where, uh, wherein you would at least have some sympathy for the, for example, the N word, I guess would be the most obvious example. A comedian, a white comedian calls a black, a black guy, the N word, you know, would you have some sympathy for the, and he assaulted him and the, and the audience member then hit the comedian. Well, when, have, Kramer, when Kramer went on that N word splurge again, it was against a black guy in the audience, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he didn't get hit. Um, look, he ruins his own career. I mean, you don't need somebody to hit you. Like you, you dig yourself into a grave, right? No, there, there is a certain type of verbal attack, which I think is meant to be the opening salvo in a I don't care anymore let's throw down there there, there are certain there, there there are certain instances where somebody says something to somebody where they really do expect it or they don't they couldn't care less whether it leads to a physical altercation now in those situations you're still not supposed to hit somebody but I think in those situations you can put more more moral culpability on the verbal attacker because you know what his intention was you know um and and calling a black person the n-word is you know is usually what you say when you're ready to get physical um so yeah i mean i would say there's a little gray area there and i would also say that what happened to will smith doesn't get anywhere near that gray area. And then of course the law can't really recognize any gray area because the law can't say you're allowed to hit somebody under the following circumstances. On the other hand, I, I think juries would probably exercise a little bit of nullification in a situation like that. They're unlikely to really throw the book at a black guy who punches a white guy in the nose who's taunting him with the N-word. Unlikely, at least in a, in a, in a blue state. Correct. Yeah, well, that sounds reasonable. Once again, eminently reasonable. You know, I, again, I have to say, I just don't know that you're going to find this kind of discourse on a lot of podcasts. I guess. Uh, and if only we could get famous guests, then we could really, really <laughs> shine as a podcast. By the way, uh, Para, we tried to get a guest to come, and I know you wanted to discuss it. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to say who, though. Well, a, a, a comedian who is... Um, sort of um, taking it upon uh, herself, we'll say it's a her, um, to, to uh, try to make comedy clubs a safe environment for women because the recent victory, whatever, the recent uh, awarding of Louis C.K. a Grammy for best comedy album to her was a, a step too far. And well, so I, this- Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so she, so she then said she wanted to talk to club owners on Twitter. She said, I want to talk to club owners about how to make comedy clubs a safe space for, for, for female comedians and waitstaff. So we thought, oh, you want to talk to club owners? Why not talk to the club owner of the probably the best club? And, you know, maybe maybe along with the comedy store in L.A., the two premier comedy clubs in America. But she didn't want to come on. No. Um, oh, that's a prerogative. Yeah, of course. I mean... 
I um I don't know. I think it's unfortunate that she didn't want to come on because I think that um it's if you want to have that conversation, it's an important conversation to have. And I think it's a conversation that is welcome. Um Perhaps she didn't want to have it in a public form, but would rather well, talk. I, you know, it, it wasn't my idea, and I'm happy that we didn't do it because. It's the kind of thing where if I said something, I, I just feel like like she felt like she might be ambushed. But the, the truth is, uh, I think it's more likely that something I might have said would be taken somehow out of context or even in context. Some things now are off limits. Um, and then she might have taken it to Twitter and used it to dredge up this whole thing against me again for, you know, for allowing Louis to form at the club. I mean. There are there are there are some female comedians out there and females and people men too who just are so um, outraged by what it is that he did that they feel he should never perform again. No, um, did you um just to, this is this is a little bit of a rewind, but I think it's always I think given that Louis just won a Grammy and given that there is a lot of people that are outraged by that. Yeah. Um. Did you, what steps did you take? I believe you said at the time that you asked all the wait staff and female comics, or you had Liz ask all the wait staff and female comics if they were, uh, if they had a problem with Louis performing here. Is yeah, that that's what, that's what, we did. We reached out and we, and we, we, you know, we fired the ones who were, were giving, gave us problems. <laughs> and I'm kidding. Um, and no, we, we did do that. And I was shocked at the time that, um, cause our waitresses are mostly young, uh, women that they were, they were not bothered with it. A couple comedians uh, were like not happy about it and they didn't want to, they didn't want to be on the same show with him. And, but even most of the female comedians, Judy Gold actually um, defended us on that. And we did everything we could, but uh, you know, my, my question to these people is always not, would be to zoom out, not about Louie, but just to know exactly what is their position in, in life about if somebody does something wrong, what should the mob, I know, that, I guess that's a loaded word, but what should the community be allowed to punish them with? And for how long, what are the safeguards? What if they get it wrong? What, you know, how do we know the story? Like there's such a dangerous and fraught thing to do. And then what are the, of course, the incentives to people just to keep lying because Louis, could have just kept saying no that never happened and he would have gotten away with it because you can't prove it um right. we know think, yeah no i think that's the thing that's been really interesting to me in watching you have to navigate this which is you really do have to zoom out because you know i'm so reactionary about things and you know there's i'm, I'm not making any of these decisions so it's like you know we talked about cosby or even um I think Trump or Hitler. And I was like, what? You should never let them in here. Um, and it's true though. It's like, so what you, you've said very publicly, like, well, if somebody hasn't been, you know, um, committed a, a crime um, in, in a court of law, then, you know, what, what sort of decisions are you supposed to make as the owner of a comedy club about those people? And really, where does it end? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't want to get dragged into it. I, I, what, I, what I said was a little bit different than that. But but but, but what did you yeah, say? I, it's, it's, too, it's too long and complicated. But the thing is this. Okay. Um, the the this notion that comedy clubs are not safe. That is, I think. I, the word is it a lie? I don't. I don't know. It's. A, I guess it's only a lie if you if you know it's not true. But the idea that the, the comedy seller is unsafe because anybody walks in, does their spot, sits down and drinks their, you know, eats their steak and and, and goes home, is it's absurd. They're eating, but, huh? What? It's unsafe to the cow that they're eating to the steak. But other yeah. than that. We have no private spaces there. There's no green room. There's no, there's no, um, there's just nothing unsafe about that. 
I mean, it's it's notable that the incident that happened with Louis and uh, Dana and Julia, is that their name, Dana and Julia, was at their hotel room that they took him back to, uh, or his hotel room, one, one of their hotel rooms, and they all, you know, went back to a hotel room at four in the morning. That's where this kind of thing happened. Um, so I, I really find it... Um, Again, I, I, my temptation is to say disingenuous, but but, I, but I, I suppose it's not true. I suppose people really believe this, but the notion that I need to worry about my, my club being safe because someone who, uh, uh, you know, did this kind of serious misbehavior, what is it, almost 20 years ago in a hotel room or in a, you know, on the phone, um, you know, this, I just don't, I just don't find this credible. I mean, I, I would I would react to it if I thought it was unsafe. I hope I'm not wrong. Well, also, but, it's like but I also might think that people might be psychologically triggered just by the presence of certain people. But so wait, that do it, you not think that any time you enough. walk into a room that there are like several men who have like actually raped women in that room? Like any time a woman walks into an elevator or a parking garage or a restaurant, there are numerous men in there that just by like sheer statistics like you know they're in there so then don't fucking ever leave the house well i i, I don't know what the six are the men who have actually like raped women well, i think um, one but, in three women have been raped right i mean i, I think I, I don't i don't i don't know if that's a credible statistic but but um and i'm, I'm not sure whatever but let, even if even if it is one in three i I think that you can assume that when you walk into a group of men, at least one has done something worse than masturbating, asking if he can masturbate in front of women. I, yeah, I would say that. I would say there are men who have been uh, physically forceful in one way or another, maybe not uh, holding somebody down and raping them, but you know, we're, uh, enough uh, to make the woman feel that she uh, was... Um, violated in some way like every every woman i know has a story about a man grabbing their ass uh, holding them down pushing them, you know scaring them a little bit short of of uh forced intercourse you agree with that right periel one out of every six american women has been the victim of an attempted or complete rape in her lifetime all right about right um, that doesn't mean one out of six men have done it yeah it's, it's the same right, guy whatever it's like loose math yeah, I mean you're right. Men are men are creeps, and and um, I mean I, I have a daughter. I worry about this very much. I don't know that men are creeps. I I, I actually would not say that. I, I don't think that that's true. Oh, you true. said that one in three, six men, uh, or whatever you cited about the elevator. Uh, statistically, you know that would indicate that men are. I mean, if if you can rely, if if. If statistically in every elevator there's a rapist, then yeah, you can say men are creeps. Can we talk about something more, uh, related and more but, interesting to me? Which but, is, but, but uh, I also want to make the point, Noam, that um, this is related. That uh, there probably shouldn't be a Grammy for best comedy album. The Grammys are about music. Uh, I don't know why there's a. I didn't even know until a few years ago, until I, you know, until I started hearing about comedians being nominated, that there was a Grammy for best comedy album. Uh, just like I. Didn't know until recently that there was an Oscar for best animated short. No one cares. What's wrong? I don't I what's wrong with that? That's fine that there's a Grammy for comedy album. It's not a real it's not a real Grammy. According to it's not a, what? It's a real Grammy. According the to first, me. The first Grammy Grammy's for best comedy music. performance. Yeah. With the Chipmunks song, but that's music. That's music. Oh wait, spoken comedy, 1960, Shelley Berman. Interesting. Okay, but the, but listen, gr Grammys are for re for recorded works, and uh, um, yeah, well, theoretically, yeah, but, we all, but we all think of Grammys as music. No, well, I mean, I've known all, always that there was a comedy Grammy. But here's my question: What do you think is the significance of the fact that the Grammys are a secret ballot, and that's why Louis won? That if if ever if anybody had to go on record about this, they would have oh, never wow. voted for him. Who votes? That's interesting. Who votes for the Grammys? I, I'm not sure. I think that I think the there I think in the final round there there is it's limited to people who are somehow related to that category in some way. But however you want to slice it, it's just another illustration of the fact that so much of this is for public consumption. But if you could vote secretly, 
you vote for Louis C.K. because you think his album is awesome. Yeah, I mean that 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 holds water. I guess yeah, you're probably right. If if they had to come out and publicly now, I, I assume we know who the voters are, even if we don't know how they voted. I'm sure well, we do. Well, you do know how they voted. They voted for Louis. Well, we don't know how each individual voted. We don't have yeah. the aggregate voted. And so if you're if you're one of the people that voted, you're under suspicion. Right. For, for those who are outraged by this, uh, and you're a voter at the Grammys, you're at least under suspicion. It's like you, you might well have voted for Louis. Of course, we don't know. But I think Noam is right. I don't know how many people would come out publicly and say, I voted for Louis' album. Of course, we don't really know that. But... Um, I'm but still you know, riding, I mean, sorry, I'm still riding the wave that my math was so off and nobody said a word about it. We, we expect that, Pat. We, we're more noteworthy <laughs> if you've gotten it right. We don't, we, we don't even, we don't even assume like, like whatever. When you, when you close statistics, it's just like poetry, I guess. It's like <laughs> one out of three, one out of six. I mean, that is like so <laughs> off. But I don't think the one out of six is a reliable statistic. I've, I've, I've read various articles of that statistic. Listen. When you say you don't think it's a reliable statistic, people can say, oh, it's because you're soft on rape or something. Whatever the statistic is, it Are is. Are you soft on read, rape? That's what the I've, New York Post is going to quote you. I've read that that statistic is not reliable, but but the, 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 the even if it's one out of 10 or one out of 20, it's still very high. I mean, it's, you know, it's a lot of people being raped. It's awful. All right, what else is on the agenda uh, what's going on with Judge Judge uh, Brown? Is she is she a justice yet, or uh, is she still in limbo? I, I haven't been following that. Um, I, I I've really been off it, but I I know that the Republicans are acting like idiots, trying to Shocking. say that she's soft on child porn. Uh, soft that's on crazy. Child porn. I, and, and without and knowing nothing about it, I'm going to tell you I don't think she's soft on child porn. Is she? No. Well, it was. <laughs> She gave what they regarded as light sentences to people with child pornography uh, collections. So I don't know exactly what uh, the sentences were, and but uh, they were lighter, I suppose, than uh, than than the average sentence. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. I, and I think did that Tennessee was... just pass a law about that you can basically marry children. I doubt it. Well, so so what's what does this mean? It, it like so traditionally the Republicans were much easier than the Democrats in terms of giving votes to the candidate of the other side, particularly when it was a liberal justice replacing a liberal justice um, as it as this is. So I'm wondering, and and politicians of course do everything for political reasons, uh, most of them. So I'm wondering if this means that somehow in the way things are now that that um, these issues get pumped up, like on, in this case, on, on Fox News. And now the, can't, the, the politicians, the senators feel that unless they vote against this woman, they will get primaried the next time they run for election and this being soft on child porn will then stick to them. They voted for the justice who was soft on child porn. And this is how these false issues create so much leverage and, and ruining our politics, right? Um, I mean, I don't think the Republicans, the, politicians don't care about any, I'm beginning to think politicians don't care about anything. They will they just don't. vote. I mean, they, they just vote for, for whatever, they do whatever they think they need to do to stay in, in office, period. I think term limits would be a really good idea. I mean, after Chuck Schumer was quiet as a mouse during the whole Gaza war, I mean, if he didn't stand for that, none of them stand for anything. That's my opinion. But I don't. I think that this um, ju just Judge Brown is um, a, a meagerly qualified judge based on what I read about her in the Times compared to other people who've been nominated, but. You know, is she just going to replace a, another liberal vote? If I could just quickly, uh, because uh, in the interest of uh, uh, honesty, uh, according to uh, what I'm reading here, Tennessee bill would eliminate age requirements for marriage. I, I don't know much more of the details, but that's what Periel was alluding to. So she was right? She was right. I guess. I don't know if that means that an adult can marry a child, but it might mean the two children can marry. I don't know what it means. And I'm not... Uh, 
I don't know the details. How could two the two seven year olds gonna get married now? That's I can't write. I, I can't just sent I write. just sent you the article. No, it's pornographic. What do you mean? It's fucking Tennessee. What's everybody so shocking shocked about? Tennessee marriage bill called quote unquote horrifying as law could see children wed. I just texted it to you. I, I don't believe anything I read either. Okay. Well, well, then what do you believe? I, I don't. I'm, I don't know. Like now, there's this whole. Okay, so what about this? Don't say gay bill. Do we even know what the truth is about that? I, I can't. I can't figure it out. <laughs> you know. So, I mean. Yeah, it's like this anti-LGBT agenda in Florida and sweeping the nation. I might add, where they're, they're, it's ridiculous. It's so absurd. It's like they're they're talking about like teaching kids they think that like if you teach kids about being gay that it's uh, that you're gonna like make them gay it's the most idiotic primitive and philistine concept in the world all right well th these are my thoughts on it number one i don't care what my kids are exposed to regard regarding um i said it was somewhere else recently regarding gay trans we've had trans guests in our house where kids know people who are gay I don't think it's going to um, change the trajectory of their sexual preference or sexual identity or gender identity. I know you're not supposed to say the sexual preference anymore, whatever. I, I'm not worried about that. However, having said all that, and I really mean that, Imperial, you know me well enough to know that that's the truth. Having said that, I don't want my kids' kindergarten, first or second or third grade teacher broaching any of these issues with my kids. This is ridiculous. First of all, it has no business in the classroom. It, they're, they're, they're too young. And, and to the extent that this is important to be taught, what are the qualifications okay. of a typical second okay. grade public school teacher? What is she? she okay, not, she, stop for anything. a second. Not, stop yeah. for a second. First of all, if your child is Let's old enough- go to enough, the second one. Yeah, go ahead. If your child is old enough to know that a man and a woman can be married. Your child is old enough to know that a woman and a woman or a man and a man can be married. That's yeah, well, all. What, what, how does that come up in second grade? I don't know. You read books about people who are well, married. What if, you, what if a teacher said, you know, yeah, what if they read a, a children's book about a couple and the couple happens to be two men? What if somebody uh, has parents who are gay? I mean, this is fucking is psychotic. Okay, 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 okay. I, I said this too. If if the law means that a teacher has to deny, like, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, that he has a, uh, a gay marriage or, or something like that, no, I would be against that because it's dehumanizing yeah. to the teacher who is living a legal life. And that, I mean, that you can't ask the teacher to lie to the kids. That's just the way it goes. But I think it's telling that these are the examples being given up what if out of left field this issue gets somehow no, implicated no, no. what the teacher's supposed to say the point is that as far as curriculum go curricula go um i don't see why this would be in the classroom and to the extent it is finding itself into the classroom i feel that there's an agenda being driven here no. and let me say one more thing about this i think it's important the arrogance here that bothers me is that until 2012, Barack Obama and all the elites, Bill Clinton, all of them, they were against gay marriage. This was the opinion of the Democratic elite intellectuals. They were against gay marriage. And there's something really arrogant about the fact that as soon as they evolved to a new position, they turn around and they face all the people behind them and say, you bunch of hateful bigots. How could you be this way? Like, like everybody has to come to this on their schedule or be called a, a hateful bigot. But the fact is that they all went to Harvard. They're all, they're all, you know, in, in the most elite circles, most cosmopolitan circles. And they're, and they're, and they were very slow to it. And now they're turning to small town religious people religious people who, who have not had their cultural experience, not worldly like them, not traveled, not been exposed to gay people in a way that that uh, give them a firsthand understanding of this matter. And then they talk down to them 
as if this was self-evident. Like you people should know this is self-evident. You shouldn't have these feelings as it pretend that they never had these feelings like last week themselves. Not only had these feelings last week themselves, but ran for political office championing these feelings, swearing that they're going to protect marriage. They, they fuck them. It's that's what that's the only thing that bothers me about this. This this fucking arrogant lie of these elites to the way they cast their judgment on these people who were no different than them just a few years ago. They don't turn around and say, listen, I understand how you guys feel. I used to feel that way, too. It was wrong when I felt it. Let me let me explain to you how I, I understand where you're coming from because I was coming from there. Let me explain to you how I felt that way and I get the way you feel. And let me try to convince you the way I was convinced. They don't talk to them like that with respect. They talk to them as if, as if no one knows they're full of shit. Like they're gonna pretend they always felt this way but they didn't always feel that way. Or even worse, they did always feel that way but they pretended not to feel that way because they thought it would get them elected. Take your pick, which one is, a, is lower character? The, the actual bigot or the one pretends to be a bigot because it's good for his career? Fuck them. That's what I think about that. Where am I wrong, Periel? I mean, Periel, you're, you're on the air. Periel, we have Periel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wrong. I'm, I'm obviously correct. Do you want me to answer or do you want to answer? If you agree with me, that, you can answer. Well, there's I two think... questions. The hypocrisy of the people that you're discussing yeah. and the wisdom of whether or not we should teach third graders about human sexuality, sexual orientation. Okay, so... Uh, so first of all, I'm sure like I don't really give a shit about the hypocrisy. I'm much more concerned with the human rights issue. And I really do think it's a human rights issue. I give a shit about the hypocrisy. Am I wrong about the hypocrisy? No, you're not wrong about okay. the hypocrisy. Go ahead. Now, but Go ahead. It's fucking disgusting and psychotic that, you know, my, I, my two of my best friends are a gay couple and they have three kids and their kids were you have any you know, friend or anybody in your life. That's not one of your best friends. You describe everybody as your best friend. No, I don't. I have a Go lot ahead. of very close friends. Well, I'll tell lovely. you, I, every time I like, sometimes I'll do Perry L's show at stand up New York and there's yeah. always a new friend there and uh, that I haven't met or never heard of that Perry L introduces as a good friend. I'm like, I never heard of this person. Well, you do. You don't <laughs> listen to me. But the point is, Perel has a lot of friends. She does have, I will say that. She has more friends, because I don't have that many. I got a few, uh, you know, they're not that many. And then I have peripheral people that are there sort of on the outer edge of my friendship circle. But Perel does seem to have a lot of really close friends. Just that I don't have peripheral. I can't do peripheral. I can't stand peripheral. I have, I do. I have a nice amount of very close friends who are amazing. They really are. Anyway, they have three boys and they're like two guys. She comes guys. out to Chicago to see me open for Louis. I don't know who this chick is. She brings her with her, you know, never heard of her, never heard her name, never heard anything. And the two are basically, they're, they're, they're basically making out at the bar practice. <laughs> That's Kat. My uh, first book ahead, was about Perel. her. Go ahead. Go ahead. What are you saying? Um, if you'd read my first book, you would have known about Kat. Because Carol, nobody's reading your book. Come on, go on. What are you going to say? What's your point? <laughs> um, no, it's appalling. It really is appalling to think that like these little boys couldn't go into school and talk about who their parents are because some fucking piece of shit lawmaker. Yeah, I'm not. You're, okay, I agree with you, but I'm not sure. Okay, stop there, though. Just I agree with you is good. Okay, but Perio, well, no, I, but I, I, I don't know if that's what the law addresses. Is. The law might just address that you can't have, like, as Noam suggested, part of the curriculum is, okay, today we're going to discuss gender identity in the third grade. This is, you know, first we're going to do fractions from, from 9 to 10. At 10 to 11, we're going to discuss, <laughs> uh, you know, how a bill becomes a law, and then we're going to discuss uh, non-binary, you know. That, we're going to discuss multiplication and then couples that can't multiply. But uh -huh. I, I think... I think that uh, you're, Perial, I mean, you're, t just to correct your point, and, but I don't think the law could tell little kids what they can't talk about, but um, it would mean that a, uh, that, a, that a teacher can't come in perhaps and talk about his gay relationship, which, which like I said, I think, that's, I think that's wrong if it comes up in a natural way. You cannot ask a teacher to have a different, ability to speak freely about his life than a straight teacher. I, I, I would draw the line there. However, I think that there should be not much 
latitude for ch- teachers in general to be discussing their personal lives. I don't think it's about the uh, teachers' personal lives, though. I think it's about uh, but what, curricul- what, 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 what becomes very difficult is to separate that from what we know is an agenda here. Now, just relatedly, no, I you, had- you're saying that. I don't agree with you. You're, you're saying that you're taking that for granted. I think the agenda is on the other side. I think it's an anti-LGBT agenda. And I okay, think well, that's you're, where- probably, You're probably right with that. They're probably both true. So, so I had lunch, uh, um, coffee uh, with uh, somebody I met for the first time the other night, a liberal person who told me that their teen was now, um, geez, I can't remember which direction, but was transgender. I think was a biological male who was, felt that they're a woman. Now this parent is not a, a bigot or, or anti-trans and this parent, and this gets lost sometimes, um, parents love their kids way more than ab- teachers do or the state does or the voters do. And this parent was really agonizing what, with whether or not this was a uh, social contagion in some way, what the right thing to do was. The parent had become a, a very, very uh, expert on all the latest science on these matters and felt that it was conspicuously unsettled, that the parent was very upset that the that the state had the right to give the child puberty blockers, things like this, without their permission. And, and um, this- Puberty puberty blocker to a a minor without the parent's permission? I didn't- According to the, uh, or doctors can do it according to this parent. Um, And and certainly, even if that's not true, I I do know it's true that this is, um, uh, there is an agenda to allow that. I don't know, maybe it's state by state. Um, there is an agenda to just sight unseen, take the, uh, if, if a child should utter, you know, some sort of words that indicates that they having, they're having um, these feelings that, the, that somebody should step in front, here's my son, Manny, somebody should step in front of the parent and make these decisions for the child. So there's a lot going on here. I don't, I don't know the, um, I don't know what's right and what's wrong. I, I'm, I'm happy that, um, I haven't been faced with such issues. One of my very, very closest friends in the world, not this person I met, did go through this. It's not easy. And whatever it is, the notion that your third grade teacher would have your child as a captive audience and then be able to discuss this stuff from her point her, her point of view about what's right or what's wrong as influential as teachers are on young kids, this is just, I think, regardless of whether I agree with what the teacher feels or doesn't agree with what the teacher feels, there's just something going on here. Stop, sweetheart. There's something going on here of where the, uh, the schools have in some way lost touch with what they're there for. We send our kids, especially to learn to read, to write and do arithmetic. And by the way, they're not doing very well at that. So why don't they double up on math and leave this sexual stuff just out of the classroom and let this be handled in the home within the bounds of the culture that that home represents? You think you're going to forget about us. You think you're going to uh, take some Muslim, some religious Muslim family and have them taught, you know, ideas about human sexuality that run 180 degrees counter to what they believe. Okay, and that's listen. a healthy democracy. Listen you know, now, having, I'll say one more thing. Having said that, I understand this is difficult because you could make the analogy. There were certain times that people felt similar ways to like intermarriage between blacks and whites. Yeah. And you say, well, do you think it was right for the schools to, no, I, 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 I get it. There may be certain things which are just so outrageous that we have to, we have to stand tight on it. We, we, but I, I don't know. I think that um, they just, this is, don't forget, this is just up till the third grade, I believe. Listen. It just really shouldn't be discussing se- no human one, sexuality No one is up to the third in, grade. No one is coming in with an agenda, I, I don't believe. 
and trying to, um, you, you know, sort of teach first, second, and third graders. Hold on, let me let me let me ask my son. Let me ask my son, um, Manny, who just walked in. Uh, 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 what do you want to talk on the podcast, sweetie? Yeah. You do. I want to talk on the podcast. All right. So this is Manny. Come here. Come come here. Have you been taught? Any, come here. Have you been taught anything in school about like? Uh, well, what have you been taught in school about like human sexuality? Like, uh, what? The, I, anything? I don't I've know. been taught that boys are better than girls. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> have you been taught anything about like gay or transgender or anything like that? No. No. But but my, but my friends. Uh, no, I haven't. Do you know about these things? Yes. How do you know about these things? Now, don't make any jokes. Now, how do you know about these things? Uh, Mia uh, learned it in her school and then told me about it. Mia learned, Mia learned in her school and then told you about it. Mia is older. All right. And and um, and um let me ask you this, though. What, you know, my oh, son. Manny? Asking me? Man, me or Manny? Hi, Manny. Hi. No, I was, I was going to ask you, not Manny. Okay, go ahead. I mean, my son, when he was in pre-K, had a teacher who was trans. And yeah. it came up very naturally that the teacher was trans because of w- whatever the conversation was. And the teacher very honestly and in a very age appropriate way, frankly, told the kids, well, I was born a girl, but now I'm a boy. Yeah, I think that's fine. OK, but according to this, you know, bill, it's not fine. OK, but this is what I'm trying. I, I yeah, according to it, Well, I, I, I haven't read the bill. I don't think you have either. I don't know what's fine out of not fine according to the bill, but I, I think the standard I would stick to is this. The teacher has a right to uh, the honest expression of their life exactly the same as any straight teacher or as any non-trans teacher, whatever it is. That's a human right in a sense. The teacher's not doing anything to be ashamed of. And the teacher should never be, be asked to act like they're, they're doing something they should be ashamed of. That is the teacher's right. I would stand by that. Okay. And what if there's the a teacher, kid the teacher does not beyond wait, wait. that. What if there's a kid who's transgender because there are. Hold on. But now the teacher does not have, that's the teacher's right as a human being, I would say almost inalienable right. Beyond that, as to teaching the subject matter, as to teaching what it means to be trans, is it, is it something you're born with? Is it something, I don't even know what they go into. No. The teacher shouldn't be teaching that stuff in the classroom. The teacher uh, doesn't even have the expertise. I don't know if anybody has the expertise because some of this stuff is in flux. But even if it is, kids are not old enough to understand it. I don't and agree. The, te- the teacher should not be teaching them anything political about, in I my opinion, about these I don't well, agree. Well, you don't have to agree. The, the, the ball, you, believe in, you believe in democracy? I don't think it's democracy? political. Okay, but do you believe in democracy? No, I believe in dictatorships. Okay, so, so whether you agree or not, I believe that communities have a right to make these decisions. Not the community do not do not have a right to abrogate the, the teacher's rights, which which I think you could probably make the legal argument. The teacher has the right to free speech to 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 the extent that a straight teacher has or a non-trans teacher has to answer any questions honestly about their lives that anyone else can answer. That's tough yeah, shit. This is so blurry, you know? I mean, at what well, point- what I'm saying is not be- blurry. Well, at what point does it become quote unquote teaching or just like talking honestly about your life? And what if there's a trans kid or a non-binary kid, which there are, and I don't agree What's, at what all. What does that have to do with it? Teach you, is it trans kid, the kids trans? So, and, then the, and then the kids are asking and then it turns into a conversation. And to me, that seems like a very natural but thing. But the teacher is not qualified to answer those questions. What if, what if the teacher te- answers a thousand questions a day that they're possibly not qualified to answer? Why? Well, does me, this- I mean, I mean, the teacher can say he's trans, but it, Perry, I'll, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't even think this is what's funny about this thing. I don't think you have any idea what it is even you're, you're arguing for. I know you exactly know, what I'm what arguing for. Like a student for? says, comes to the, the, the teacher, the, the, they're making fun of the kid. Now, the teacher has to say, look, you can't make fun of him. He's He was born biologically this way now he's this way it's perfectly fine yeah but does the law say you can't do that we don't even know so I'm saying we, don't, we don't even know you, you're, you're responding to a basically a meme here don't say <laughs> gay which the bill doesn't say and 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 you and it's like like this is my frustration with you like 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 
take the fucking time to read the bill and a few and a few analyses of it that I have really first tried of all, to explain. I have read the bill. You have not read the I, bill. I have read part well, of maybe it. Maybe that should be our assignment for, for a I've future. I read part of it. Like any of us why, have read the why bill. Why do we get on a lawyer who is opposed to this bill or a lawyer well, who's supposed to read the, the bill, bill ourselves? You know, if we have a lawyer on, then we got to deal with the lawyer. And yeah, I mean, I, or, or somebody who knows what it is. I know what it is. Uh, probably our dear, our old friend Alan Dershowitz probably knows. Oh, he could come back on. We get yeah. shit every time we have him on, though. Listen, it's, it's the same. The bill thing. would ban curriculum for all grades that may teach, promote, or endorse what it calls "quote unquote" divisive or inherently racist concepts. It would outlaw any textbook, instructional material, or academic curriculum that "quote unquote" promotes concepts including critical race theory, intersectional I, theory. I think you're reading the, the wrong bill, Periel. That's not the "Don't Say Gable." That's the that's the the CRT bill. Wait, no. Oh, I might yeah. be. Wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Uh, Thank God we don't charge for this. We don't have to give refunds. All right. This is. Uh, all right. I'll come back to this. Um, all right. We're reading something in the New York Times. Uh, trying to find the tech. Well, I, it's a paywall here. So I, I do have an interesting talking point, but I need permission from Dan. What's your talking point? I met Noam's mom. Oh yeah, okay. I, that that sounds like a good talking. We're, we're kind of right. We're kind of well, no, because I I told uh, uh, Perry Allen I've said several times that she's not authorized to change topics, oh. uh, which I think is a prudent policy. But but she ran it by me, and I I think that it well we're we're running out of time, Perry Allen. But yeah, she, you met Noam's mom. She was so lovely. She was really nice. Um, I can't believe I've never met her before. And it was um, it was really just so wonderful because she is so far left wing. I mean, she makes me look like Tucker Carlson. It was just absolutely fucking unbelievable. She was like interrogating me about my position on um, the Palestinian Israeli conflict. <laughs> I don't know if Noam has anything to, uh, to to say to that, but I will say that I met her as well. I've met her before, and uh, she looks really, really good for her yeah, age. Yeah, she looks great. I don't know how old she is, but she looks great. She's 68. No, she's not. <laughs> she's 79. <laughs> 79. She's 79. Yeah, she looks she looks. Wow. Tremendous. Yeah. Um, I, I did have a, uh, a, a thought. Are we finished? I had a thought on um, trying to find the text of the "Don't Say Gay" bill. Okay, I, 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 I had a thought on race that uh, maybe we'll, we'll save it for another day if we're out of time. No, say um, it. Well, I, somehow the the uh, Ukraine thing uh, and and the Will Smith thing made me think about this stuff. You know that when when somebody. Um, like when a like a, a black kid commits a crime, let's say. Conservatives will be very much about agency. You 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 committed this crime, you know, you are, you have free will, you chose to commit a crime, you, you're going to jail. And liberals will very often say, well, you have to understand his, his upbringing and his culture, you know, the the all the disadvantages and the legacy of slavery and, and these things. And sometimes they'll even from that advocate not punishing them, for instance, in a, you know, a, some sort of looting or even, even in assaults, whatever it is. And this has always been, causation has, I've always found this issue difficult because both sides are actually correct. It is true that people have to be held accountable for their free will, because if they're not, it's anarchy. I mean, if you don't, if you don't punish people for committing crimes, then, then all is lost. On the other hand, it's heartless to pretend that the person's environment isn't part of that story. And sometimes you notice even like very gifted people will come from nothing and become something and they'll turn and say, well, I did it, but why, so why can't you do it? But of course the answer very often to that is, well, you happen to be, you know, gifted with a top 0.5% IQ. And that's, so you were able to find your way out of this situation, but where the average schmo is still struggling. Um, but so it, it occurred to me that given my particular upbringing, 
Dan's probably even a better example of this. If I had wanted to become a violent criminal drug dealer, I would have had to devise a strategy how to overcome the advantages of my life to get myself into, to be able to become a drug dealer in a, you know, in a violent situation. Like I wouldn't even know how to have gone about doing that. And yet for some kids, all they have to do is surrender to basically gravity, just the, basically the, the gravity of their, their uh, situation to find themselves in that, in, in that situation, to find themselves falling in with the wrong crowd, to find themselves committing violent criminals, to find themselves w with the, with the uh, facing the incentive structure that would lead somebody to want to become turned to crime in order to get money as opposed to my situation. So I just think that this is a, it's, it's, it's a, just an interesting way to think about it. It's quite unfair. It, it, it ought to make everybody consider the, 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 the role that luck plays in their lives before bad luck plays in their lives. And that ought to temper the extent to which they, they judge others. But yet, on the other hand, when you see somebody like kick the shit out of an old lady, I don't know how far you can take what I'm saying. Uh, we, we, we have to, we do have to expect people to uh, no, Miss Stolly, but surely, no, Miss Stolly, but surely coming around to my position that free will does not exist, and uh, yeah, well, it is free will, and you know, and still, even in even among uh, people who grow up in a disadvantaged context, very few of them, relatively, maybe way more than people who are privileged, but relative to their to their their universe, very few of them are become violent criminals, so. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's not something they, that people don't exercise agency and avoid, but still there is something unfair about it. And there's something shallow, I think, in the way both sides look at this, because very few people really seem to struggle with the fact that both sides have a point. I don't know. That's I, it's neither here nor there. It was just something I was thinking of. Some of my shower internal monologues, you know. Uh, by the way, the don'ts. Well, okay, very interesting, uh, but I don't have much to add to it. I, uh, no, but no. I did find uh, this. All I can find is that the "Don't Say Gay" bill, titled "The Parent Parental Rights in Education," banned classrooms discussions about sexuality and gender identity in primary grade levels. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm okay with that. I don't want. I do not want. I will have. I'll handle that at home. Thank you. What, what happens if it comes up at school? Teacher said, well, that's not, no, shut up, kids. We're doing math no, now. No, they don't have free discussion at school. It's normal to talk about this stuff. It is just an absolute ploy. Well, let me ask you a question, Perry. What if the teacher uh, um, disagrees with you on this stuff? Is that okay for them to talk about? They're not supposed to be indoctrinating the kids one way or the other. It's just well, about... Well, <laughs> They're not. I don't want them indoctrinating the kids one way or the other. But the fact that you can't talk about something as normal as like being two men being married or whatever the fuck it is, is a complete ploy from an Dan, read it again. Read it again, Dan. Read it again. Very general. It just says intentionally, uh -oh. by the way, this is not to discuss matters of sexuality or gender identity in primary grade levels. It's disgusting. But 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 that could come up. Like, but how far does that go? Does that mean that if you know the teacher is married to a man and he can't say, so I, my husband and I were having, you know, because that could what, be considered discussing it. I don't know. What if the teacher? What if the students? Is 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 is, is it normal to be transgender? What should the teacher say? Of course, it's well, the normal. teacher can't. <laughs> you say, of course. What if the teacher says, well, no, actually, it's it's considered it's considered a mental illness. It's in DSM, gender dysphoria. What okay, say gender that? dysphoria is not considered the same thing as being transgender. That's number one. No, no. Well, gender dysphoria is 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 that part of? No, I'm. You saying the teacher should say we cannot. That's not a discussion that we should have. If 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 a teach if a student says to the teacher, is it normal that th that a boy? Ben Shapiro. But not, no, no. Gender, you... gender dysphoria is a concept. That it's in DSM, a clinically significant distress impairment related to strong desire to be of another gender, which may include desire to change primary second characteristics, sex treatment, sex reassignment therapy, uh, sex reassignment surgery. So like, 
the teacher, the te believe me, everybody's going to flip on this bill if the teacher starts saying, this is gender dysphoria, this is mental illness. Every, all of a sudden, as soon as the teacher starts saying that, the liberals are going to be saying, they shouldn't be discussing this in the classroom. <laughs> Well, of course, that's what they're the going to say. The teacher should say if the student says, "Is it normal that that a that somebody that with a penis uh, puts on a dress and plays with the girls?" And the teacher's supposed to say, "What? I can't discuss this." Yes, yeah, it's the normal. Should say, the teachers, I mean, it, it's a dicey thing. But, but I would tell the teacher to say, "Say that's not. I'm I'm just a third grade teacher. These are complicated issues. You discuss it with your parents." No, come on, that's not realistic at all. This is a total ploy to pass an anti-LGBT- Well, okay, Periel, then answer my question. And what if well, the what teacher if the kid, says what exactly kid, what I said? Well, if the kid is being bullied, as I said, as I mentioned earlier, then doesn't the teacher have a responsibility to say, look, this, there's nothing wrong with him or her, you know, uh, that's his, uh, her, I mean, wh whatever pronouns they would use, but-, but um, Of course. You know. Um, okay, but Periel, what if the teacher says, well, if you have the desire to be uh, of the opposite sex, that's called gender dysphoria, and that's in the American Psychiatric Association DSM, a book, you know, the classification of mental disorders. Now, that's Shut all. Up. That is Seriously, all. Stop it. I'm, I'm being totally serious. Right now, that's, stop that it. That is all incontrovertibly true, what I just said. That is true. Obviously, now, you that's don't... not what they're supposed to say. Why not? Because it's ridiculous. And being right. gay was a fucking mental disorder in DSM until like the 70s. Uh, so what you're saying is that the teachers are not only supposed to say the right thing, they're supposed to say the right thing, even if it's contrary to what the psychiatric profession says. The psychiatric what I'm saying is this. profession. I don't, Perio, I, don't get me wrong. I do not want them saying this to the kids. I'm saying that what you really mean is you want this if the teachers say what it is you agree with. But right. you will not want it if the teachers say what it is you don't agree with. Let me tell you, some of the things you don't agree with will be textbook true. Until they so take it that's out of why the this is, That's why this is so fraught. And you're not talking to seventh graders as you can say to them, here's an assignment, read this, read that, come to your own conclusion. You're talking to third graders who believe in Santa Claus. First of all, okay, first of all. I don't think third graders believe in Santa Claus. Oh, yes, they do. How do they? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know. And it or, doesn't or matter. The first point, graders do. The point yeah. is, is that none of this is relevant. The point is, is that this really is an anti-LGBT agenda. That's where none it's of this coming is, from. None of this is relevant then. None of this is relevant. All right. All right. Well, I don't think there's an easy answer. No, it's not an easy I mean, answer. May, may, like I said, you know, if the, if the bill said you can't have like a particular curriculum, you can't like, uh, you know, that, that discusses this, then okay, it's not part of the curriculum. Your curriculum is reading, writing, and arithmetic. However, if it comes up naturally, I don't know that this bill covers it. If there's a kid being bullied and the teacher wants to say, hey, here's the deal, this kid, there's nothing wrong with him, whether that's included in the bill. Well, bu bullying should never happen, no matter what it is. I mean, like, like children are children are bullied for um, being, you know, unattractive, for having moles, for like all sorts of things that people are that children are bullied for without the teacher having to take a deep dive into what it means to have a mole or you know, you know, a no, stutter but you explain or explain it in an age appropriate way. Yeah, it's wrong to bully people who are different than you. Right. OK, listen, I, I'm not endorsing this bill that don't, well, I don't I, I don't really know, hope not. I don't know enough about the bill well, to I endorse it. I don't know how it's it written, either, but, but I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you basically where I come down on that particular topic. It doesn't right? feel that this should be part of the curriculum. If it if it comes up in, 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 in relation to the teacher's personal life or to a student, that's one thing. I mean, that's I, a fair... I, the way I generally come down is nobody should the law should never force somebody to dehumanize themselves in the sense that they can't discuss in the same way anyone else can discuss who they are, what their lives are, what their family is, whatever it is, because this is their, I think their basic right as a human being, if they're not doing anything that, that society feels, if, if they have rights to do these things societally, then they, sh they should have the right to say I'm doing these things. I, I believe you. that. I'm yeah. telling you that this thing is very dicey and it has a very sinister agenda. All right. Okay. And when I read it, I'll probably feel even more that way. 
You won't, but, that. Let's, let's be, but you're not going to read it. So there's no risk of that. Look, I, I, um, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not supporting this bill. I like, you know, I don't, I don't. I mean, imagine like, to feel this strongly and I haven't even read it. Imagine how much more strongly I'm going to feel once I read it. I mean, frankly, even among liberal people, I know, I don't know anybody less except for you, maybe less concerned about their child being influenced in any way. I am so, and have always been so sure that these things were beyond uh, the influence of um, teaching or peers or anything like that, that I really don't worry about it for my kids. Yeah. I'm not, what do you mean? I don't know what you, what were you, what do you mean that you don't know anybody who's less? I don't, I don't, I don't think that my child is going to become transgender because somebody could convince them somehow to become transgender. I don't. Of course not. I mean, that's like saying like, can, can I make you gay right now? Like you're straight, right? Is there anything that like I could say that would make you be gay? I mean, it's absurd. Well, the, the other side of it is that some people say that um, that there are social contagions for people who are, who feel um, who, there's a certain perhaps a certain psychological profile of somebody who is so um, prone to peer pressure or so or so prone to wanting to be accepted in some way that they will embrace something like this for the positive attention it might give them at a time like now when this is really being celebrated. I, I, I don't think that's ridiculous. Look, let, let, me, let me take it as an analogy. Th there is nothing more um, powerful than the, than the urge of self-preservation, right? This is a very, very basic instinct, at least as basic as the urge for sex. And yet in a certain context, you can convince somebody to blow themselves up, right? Okay. You, can, you can convince somebody to be a suicide bomber for, for whatever. Right. Okay. So the, the idea that somebody in a certain context can be convinced to do something that they wouldn't otherwise have done, I can't say that that's not possible because I, clearly it is possible in certain cases and, and certain people who already kind of maybe have a certain kind of mental illness where they're just so insecure is a word that's coming to mind, but it's maybe that's not the right word, but just so yearning for positive attention from people. Um, maybe they would do something regarding sexuality that uh, they wouldn't have otherwise done. Maybe, I, I don't know, I'm not an expert. So, so ev everything might exist to some degree to say that something is zero very few things are zero. Very few things are zero, including things like this. I, I, I would not, I wouldn't put my life on it that there's zero probability of these things, but I think it's very, 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 very few. And it's not something I worry about. But you know, if, if my if my kids seem less mentally stable in some way, maybe, maybe I would worry about it, but I, I don't worry about it. Well, I think I will wrap it up there unless anybody has anything else to uh, add. Yeah. Noam, do you... Uh... Is that a good place to wrap up? Yeah, well, I know some people might object even to the term worrying about it, as if why should you worry about it? what do you even care which which way they 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 come out? And and I guess there's they have a point um at that too, but that's for another day. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, podcast at comedycellar.com for comments, suggestions, queries, constructive criticism, uh etc. Um, I guess we'll see you next time on the Comedy Cellar, live from the table. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.